Yeah, I can hear it. All right, that's a good start. <laughs> Time, what's up, brother? How are you? What's up, Derek? I switched my hat for you. <laughs> there you go, FCC. I got the Reds yeah. covered here. And uh, all right, so everybody, thank you, uh, thank you for joining us on the show. We're doing it a little different this time. Um, I'm up, up in my production quality a little bit. Uh, hopefully, you heard that. Everything worked. I think it was. Um, we played Hoodie Times' new uh, new video. So let me, um, brother, before we kick it off, let me. 
just give a little background here for everybody. So, um, you know, I love Cincinnati has truly such um, an active uh, arts, music, DJ scene, all of this stuff it has for so long. And I think it kind of gets overlooked a little bit, um, you know, because it's the Midwest, like fly over country, you know, so to speak. Um, but we've had so many artists come out of here, and uh, you and I, mutual friend Santino Corleone, who I just had on the show, has moved out to L.A. now. He's kicking it big out there um, and doing great things, and, and you are as well, my friend. So right now, um, where where are you at on this globe? I think this is crazy what we could do with te technology right now. Bro, well, the internet is kind of cool. Um, yeah, I'm in Nelson, New Zealand, which is... Um, New Zealand is a small Pacific nation, kind of southeast of Australia. And there's two main islands, and I'm on the South Island. And Nelson's at the very top um, in the Tasman, there in the Cook Strait by well, so right in the middle of the country, actually. That's uh, that's awesome, and and so we, we're going to hear the backstory of, of what brought you all the way from Cincinnati uh, to New Zealand on the other side of the globe from where we're at right now, but. Uh, yeah. One of the things that we had to work out in setting this up was the time difference. So uh, everybody watching here at 7 p.m., uh, a little after 7 on Wednesday. So what what time, what day is it uh, where you're at? It is just after 11 a.m. on a Thursday here. Yeah. We're, in a, we're in a time warp. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty wild. So um, let's, let's just kick it off. We've got some folks joining us. And... Um, Encourage everybody to listen to the, listen to the song we played it at the top of the show. If you miss it, we've got the links, the YouTube links here. Um, he's getting tons of traction with this new single, Truth. Um, and I want to hear the story of the song because it's actually a pretty pretty powerful um, message, not as well as a, a, just a super cool um, track. Uh, but tell us how you got there, man. What brings you to New Zealand? Tell us about coming up, uh, Little Hoodie. <laughs> How it went and uh, how you got into the into the music and hip hop game for so long now. Um, right, so I mean, when you and I first met, I was DJing, so that was quite a little while ago, between probably what 2010, 2012 time. Right. Um, for some of those who may watch this, um, may know Flo Ohio. I was in a group with uh, Samuel Stevesmore, fine, talented producer. We were called Flo Ohio. And we were only around for like a year or so, but um, we made a couple records and we did a small deal for, you know, one single contingency thing with a label out of Dublin, Ireland. And so we kind of were, were making some moves and we had some good connections, uh, of course, both in L.A. and uh, in the Gold Coast of Australia, and that leaked into New Zealand. And so when we went our separate ways, I moved out to L.A., I started Hoodie Time, that was uh, New Year's of... Uh, it was January 2015, and so I spent like a good year, you know, working a shitty job and making hoodie time happen, um, and then my numbers started to do really well uh, in Gold Coast and in New Zealand as well, um, just due to those connections that I kept and some new friends I was making, making noise over there, and um, I in 2016 started dating my now fiance, um, Liat, and her dad was born and raised in Nelson. And that was kind of a weird connection that we made. And um, when Trump got elected, when, when he won, we kind of looked at each other and we were like, yo, like, do you want to go over there? Let's let's make a tour, see if it's a cool place or whatever. Like, who knows, might, you know, might be good to have a backup. So, so you met your fiance here in LA? Yeah, in LA. But yeah. she's for, she's from New Zealand, and her dad grew up in Nelson, where you're at now. Yeah, so she's a oh, cool. citizen. Wow. Okay. And that was just a weird connection that we made randomly. And so I did book a tour. Uh, we booked a two week tour of New Zealand in January 2017. Um, it popped off. It was super dope. The shows were awesome. Um, one of the places we played at in Auckland booked us. While we were already there, booked us again for a farewell gig, and it was it was it was great. Um, that that show got shut down. It was so great. So, um, so we <laughs> party ain't a party till the cops show up, dude. And we did um, sweaty windows and shit, bro. But uh, <laughs> it was it was cool. So 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 we were like, yo, let's go for it. Let's let's move out there. Let's. I booked another tour. I booked like thirty dates, and we went out there. And you know, obviously, I quit my job. 
it was cool. The shows were coming in and money was fine. So we were just like, dude, let's pay someone else taxes for a little bit and just watch from a distance and ended up, you know, just doing really well. It's a good fit. The music scene here is vibrant. Awesome. No complaints, bro. <laughs> Corona for <laughs> yeah, we probably need to talk about that, um, and we'll get to it. But you know, it was cool. This um, you know, over the last couple of winters that I've uh, uh, spent in Colombia and um, connected with you, and and we're chatting on Instagram or whatnot, and it's just like we're talking about stuff going on in Cincinnati, but I'm in South America, and you're in New Zealand. Um, and I felt like we connected more over that and I started paying more attention to your stuff again because I saw that you were really popping off in, in New Zealand. Um, and then to kind of bring it up to, to today and, and following your tours and, and your music and stuff like that. But uh, when I saw you were dropping this new single, Truth, um, you know, so I paid, it, I paid attention to it. And um, the first time I listened to it, I'm like, man, this is different than anything I've ever like, heard from you. Um, before it's it just it's a great song no matter no matter who did it but you did an amazing job producing this um, it's different from your usual vibe which by the way that's why I'm in kind of my uh, my island my uh, <laughs> tropical reds motif uh, today because you've always had that kind of tropical island kind of vibe type of thing um, going on and a lot of your music is around that and the colors and your videos and, and those kinds of things um, real vibrant, like you like you mentioned, your your music and the videos are vibrant like that. Um, but this is a little different, man. It's a hip hop song, but uh, and you got to tell us about is it Basho? Is that how you pronounce it? Uh, Bosho. Bosho. Um, this guy's, you know, I hadn't heard of him. He's from New Zealand, apparently. But um, man, I'm listening to him on guitar, and this is just awesome, like blues riffs um, kind of thing with your hip hop vocals over it. Um, but yet, then he goes into a little solo, and it's almost like an 80s guitar rock kind of thing. Um, but yet, there's a message in the song, too. And I know we've connected a lot, not only about Cincinnati stuff, but about, you know, politics in general and some of the bullshit that's going on these days, quite frankly, um, here, uh, primarily. And so, tell us about that. Tell us about the song, the, the story behind the song and how it all came about. So, Bo Show hit me up, like... <clears throat> we we had honestly only played like a gig together. We we joined um, you know this this band who was booked for uh, New Year's Eve back in 2018. They wanted a rap vocalist for the encore and they wanted Bo for lead guitar. So we that's how we met. We just randomly played this massive New Year's show for 10,000 people. And that was <laughs> our first time. Just randomly for 10,000 people. We <laughs> meshed really well. And so. He ended up calling me, you know, we became friends after that, and he ended up calling me one day, he was like, Joe, I've got a song, I've got a loop, I, I just want you to hear it, I feel like you should write something to it. I was like, okay, so I just went over there, you know, had a cone, he put it on, and um, and I was like, okay, I'm feeling it, and it was, it was done, and I said, do you have an idea for what it's about? He goes, I don't know, I just, I like the word truth, and I was like, he was like, I just, we want the truth. And I was like, all right, I, I also <laughs> would like some truth. Big uh, fan. Give me a minute. You know, and I pulled out my phone. I had him play it again. At 10, 15 minutes, you know, we, I wrote the song. It was done. Like, that was, it was it. I, I was like, I also want truth. And it would just came out. The best songs come out like that. Right. Um, but, yeah, we, we just, we did, a, like, a little live video that we kept around. It was you know, this was May 2019, and it was for New Zealand Music Month, which is May. And um, some people really liked it, and they, you know, say, "Oh, you should, you know, do more songs, take it on tour, like make this a real production." Right. And um, Hoodie Time was really busy with singles and touring, and Bo is a very, very hardworking traveling musician. As well. I mean, he plays all the time; it's all he does. And so we just, you know. We did pub nights instead of band practice because we weren't really thinking it was going to be a big thing. And, right. You know, couple couple uh, months ago, Bo approached me and he was like, "I see you've been like so so you know perturbed lately with all the things that are going on." Me too. Like, do you think it's a good time to to revisit this? And I was like, "Absolutely, let's do it." He said, "Cool, I got a friend named Johnny who said he might want to do a video for us. Let's sit down." 
and we got a crew that honestly everyone put in their time and effort on on the humble no money was involved at all it was just friends making something that we thought could be wholesome good content that needs to be seen in a time where it would make a difference um and so johnny lopardo directed and did drone um photography and drone videography uh maca clark uh, was on ground cameras we had a behind the scenes crew with um Caleb johnson leading that uh, we all, my fiance helped with lots of stuff, Jane Cowdery, um, Johnny's Girl, and Bo and I um, did our thing, you know, but everything was a collective, 100% group effort, and um, just on something everyone believed in, and I, I think we were all pretty happy with what happened there. No, oh, it's, it's an amazing song and a, an amazing video, and if I'm doing the math right, how, how many views are you up to, uh, over now, like, across all platforms? It looks like a lot to me. Uh, across all platforms, we're probably at like 120k. Yeah, that's what I thought was over 100,000. That's awesome. The Facebook, the Facebook took off. But the funny thing about the Facebook upload is we were clocking 10 to 12,000 views a day, 10,000 views a day, just about when it came out, and um, it's at about 104, 105k right now or something. But it completely was disabled the other night. We everything was organic. Um, we had reached about 90,000 streams or 90,000 views on the video organically and we thought, hey, why not put in 10 bucks a day for a month just right. to make sure that we're on good boost, you know, um, just keep ticking over in case, you know, that was as far as it was going to go. It wasn't slowing down, but we were like, let's start it. So we had it going. It was, uh, we, we put a modest amount into it. It was just spending 10 bucks a day, but it was, it went through the checks that you got to do. If you've ever done a boosted post, you know what I'm talking about. Right. It was approved. It was running. It was all good. And, um, we, I, I woke up yesterday, uh, to, and I didn't even have an email. I was just checking the stats on, on the thing and it, and it's, it was disabled. Oh. Now, now, I was like, that's strange. Oh. And, um, and so I looked through my notifications, whatever, nothing. So I got in touch with Facebook directly. And um, the funny thing is that it happened once it reached 100K and 1,000 reactions. And, and uh, they, they, they said, yeah, we, we, we think that this is uh, political-driven content. It is possibly uh, in a position to influence an election. And so if you oh, want wow. to continue to run... Um, you're going to have to give us your personal information, your SSN, your, you know, passport, all that shit that they have to do that they only seem to do for some things. Right. And, uh, you know, I just said that's a bit sketchy and that almost all of the traction has stopped. Oh, wow. I mean, it's, it seems to be, it's strange because it's going on 10,000 views a day organically. Right. And then nothing, eh? So we know they can they can throttle their uh, um, where it's making its way out to and such like that. Um, yeah, that sucks, man. Because yeah, you have to do you know even during the 2017 council campaign, it wasn't like that initially, and then towards the end, they made you do all this authentication stuff so they could they could start to track that. But that speaks a little bit also to the message. So tell us a little bit about you know tell us a little bit about that. And you got a letter in the mail the other day that was pretty interesting, yeah. right? So I think that that may have, that may, all this buzz may have kind of maybe influenced the, the situation that we're in right now. And, and maybe if we never even tried to do the little boost, it, maybe it wouldn't have gotten flagged so quick. But uh, yeah, I mean, the whole message of the song is, uh, you know, if you've seen the video, we, we, we shoot it, we, we shot it with no one else in the video. There's, there's places of nature, wide open spaces of nothingness. But there's also places that are usually a mass of people. So we're we right. have a few stadiums and arenas that we shot in, and you'll never see anyone else. And the point is, is that the issues we're talking about in the song, Flint, Michigan, um, big pharma, price gouging, uh, racism, every, every police brutality, all this stuff that's going on, voter suppression. Um, these things are very real that we're talking about in the song. And I think that the average human, let nay, the average American, right? has these issues, shares these these feelings of not being heard. And I think that that's what, that's what we wanted to go for in the video was these messages are real, they're being screened, they're being demanded. Um, but 
no one is listening, and if they are, they don't give a flying about us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so that's the funny thing is that you know if if Facebook is actually stunting the progress of this now, um, you know it's it's not like we spent much money at all on it. It got flagged after you know only ten thousand non organic views. You know, we wow. were making some pretty big noise, and uh, only once we did that did it get, did it get shut down. So. Um, but yeah, we got we got a letter in the mail from Nick Smith. Nick Smith is um, a member of Parliament here in New Zealand. He's of the National Party, which uh, I'm not going to equate completely equate parties, but they would be, you know, in rough sense, are kind of Republicans. More to the more um, to the right. Yeah, more, right. more more to the right. So actually, that he would be somebody that that, that maybe that the song is kind of somewhat directed toward. Exactly, and he's he's. Hard line against the cannabis referendum. We are voting in September to legalize recreational cannabis and also the end of life decision. Um, assisted, you know, euthanasia. Yeah. And uh, and he is strongly against the cannabis um, the cannabis referendum. And so when he sent us that letter, you know, he said as an elected official, or uh, you know, I'm I'm with you in the in the demands of truth from our leaders. I was like, well, that's funny because we're kind of we're kind of demanding that. <laughs> that people like you stop spreading this information and living right. in the past, you old fuddy duddy. Um, and so we posted it up, you know, kind of thanked them for acknowledging the song. You know, it's good that we're making content that's directly, you know, uh, uh, challenging government officials and decisions and things like that, and that we're getting that the response back from those people. But um, you know, maybe this is a stunt. So, you know, we, we asked them, we said, if you'd like to sit down, we'd love to talk to you about the referendum. Uh, we've got some ideas for a better Nelson, a better New Zealand, better world. And uh, crickets, bro, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking. Shocking. Yeah. Some yeah. things are... Yeah, right. Some things, uh, some things ever change, no matter what part of the world you're in. So um, that's a great, it's a great story, man. Like I said, a powerful message. Folks, if you haven't, if you haven't heard... Uh, the song yet? Yeah, check it out. Uh, I put the links up in the comments. If anybody's got a comment or a question, Steve Hill will drop by and dropped you a chur. I don't know all the uh, <laughs> all the Kiwi lingo uh, that you drop on me, but um, I'm trying to pick it up. So uh, so you know so one of the things that we connected on um, was when you were going through the issue with your visa and stuff like that. And now we're in a scenario here where you know, basically New Zealand has got COVID on lockdown, um, got things under control. It's going crazy here. Uh, starting tomorrow in Ohio, we go to mass statewide, uh, start at 6 p.m. But um, at a point when I started this, I forgot what the hell it was. Uh, what the hell was it? Lost my, lost my train, of, train of thought. Uh, oh, your uh, visa situation. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, because I was uh, down in Columbia, and I had to, so because of the period of time that I was there, you know, I had to do some of the, uh, get get involved in some of the, the intricacies of that. And you start learning. Oh, my point with COVID was, you know, basically we're locked in to the U.S. right now. Nobody's accepting us anywhere. Um, you know, put a wall up, and I had to announce to keep us in. I think, but um, uh, so t so tell us about that situation, right, and and then we can talk a little bit about what the future holds. Um, I want to hear like tour plans, and uh, are you planning on staying um, staying there now for a, for a length of time? What's your thoughts on the future of this country as far as that goes? Yeah, yeah, man. We um, yeah, I remember specifically um, the the visa situation you were talking about. It's definitely no matter where you go, I'm sure it's it's a stressful situation, and it you know, can be a pain for anybody. Um, my, my whole thing posting about how difficult of a process it was is because I wanted people to see that like, you know, uh, as a, as a white straight male who's, you know, comfortable and in a democratically socialist country, I still have some issues with, you know, immigration. So please keep in mind that it must be so difficult for someone of color or of a different you know, nationality to be going into a place like America, which is a completely different game. And so, especially, when, and you that, speak the language. I mean, you speak the language. Yeah, exactly. Same, same language too. They speak English here for sure. 
Um, but that was my whole point in posting about that and sharing my experience as it went on was because I think so many people need to um, appreciate what people do to go and start a new life and, and, yep. and better themselves. And, and we need to keep it objective. You know, not everyone's life is the same. And we didn't start from the same place with the same resources. So it was a great experience, even though it was very rough for me to have. And the anxiety that it caused was crazy. It was great to share that. And, and some people came to me like, wow, you know, I, shit, I didn't know it was like that. I, right. I'll, I'll, I'll give some people, you know, the, the benefit of the doubt and give them a better, you know, uh, more space in my head, you know. No, that's a, that's a great point because, you know, I remember you and I chatting about this um, and saying, you know, you've been in a place as a human being. You're in a place for a while and you make establish relationships and you start to put roots down. And, you know, if you enjoy that place and those people, um, and that's what you know, that's where you want to be, right? And so you start thinking about, are they going to deport me? Really? They're going to kick me out of here? Like, I might just swim back or something like that. Um, yeah. And so, and that's in your, in a situ situation like yours. And then we talk about, like, for example, a guest on the show, I had Aira Avila, who, you know, came here and, and is here under DACA uh, because her parents brought her here when she was very young. And if that program had not been renewed, herself, she's been here over 20-some years of her life, this is all she knows, right? Um, and so if that program's not renewed, then folks like that could be deported after being in a place they've only ever known as home. Um, and we start to see and you start connecting on a human level and talk about these kind of, you know, borders that we have that are kind of arbitrary, really, when you think about it. Um, and it just kind of puts all that in, in perspective, especially if you're coming from someplace that's dangerous, you know, your family's leaving some war torn place or what have you. But, um, yeah, it's very cool to give you that perspective and I'm glad you, so you made it through now. You've got a residency visa or you're allowed to stay. Yeah, so I started out, I've been visa hopping. I started out on a one year work holiday just before here. And then, uh, when we knew we were going to stay, I did a two year partnership visa and now, um, the last one that I applied for was a three year, um, but it got approved for five. So that's nice. that's great. They were just like, "Hey, you, you seem like you like this place. Well, how's five years?" So uh, even if the unspeakable happens and forty five is elected again, Heaven I have forbid. voted after the twenty first of January, twenty twenty five. So <laughs> if I do, I don't have to do it. <laughs> So you're literally somebody who, you know, with everything that's that's going on in this country under 45, like you don't want to be here because um, it, it's just so much bullshit. I mean, to be honest. Well, I, it's be, it's beyond that. I mean, I would have loved to have been home and marched with my people. Yeah. Uh, we we chose to do other things. We obviously couldn't come back uh, because of the pandemic and our you know borders are closed and we wouldn't be allowed back in New Zealand if we left. So. Um, we decided to, you know, do other things like post and post and post about it, share the live streams, donate, um, you know, donate to bail funds and get, get, get some of our friends out of jail. Um, and that's really all we could do from afar. But, um, yeah, it was, it's more than just the bullshit that's going on that I don't want to be around for. It's that I don't want to, I don't want to fund that by paying my taxes to that. And I've always had an issue with kind of how our taxes are spent in the United States. You hear about the military budget and it just drives you insane. Right. There's, you know, boneyards of airplanes and bombs that never get used and all of it is to guard some oil and poppy fields and I'm not about that. And that's right. just one thing that I disagree with about the spending. Um, but there's a law here in New Zealand that is, of course, you know, backed by U.S., you know, international foreign affairs, whatever they do. And if you are a uh, if you are an expat and you make less than a hundred thousand dollars a year, which unfortunately I do, um, <laughs> you are so far, a, so far. You're uh, you're, so you're 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 so on this far. trajectory, man. So far, hundred thousand views, not dollars. <laughs> That's so, right. Um, but until until then, you don't have to you don't have to pay U.S. taxes until you you break that hundred um, k mark. And so I. For mainly, I've always been a person who said if something, if some, if someone gets in there and is just wreaking havoc, if anything truly is bad enough that I can't support it and sleep at night, then I'm going to leave. And I did. 
and I have not paid any taxes under the Donald Trump administration. I pay my taxes to Jacinda Ardern, and I think that she has wonderful spending here in New Zealand. Her first couple weeks in um, as prime minister, her main thing was uh, doing the uh, a, a whole reimagination of the budget to fit New Zealanders and, and progress for us as, as Kiwis. Um, you know, when we had our Christchurch massacre, the mosque shooting, um, uh, within six days, legislation passed to gun buyback. It was it was crazy how fast that happened, like this. So let's uh, we're on this political rant for a second. Let's talk. Just tell me real quick about that. So guns were legal in New Zealand, and then that big shooting happened. What was that about a year ago now? And then yeah. how that how that go down for people that don't recall it? So um, guns have never been like they are in the states here in New Zealand. Obviously. Um, we don't have, what, 21 guns per human. But uh, <laughs> I don't know what the number is. It's wild. Yeah, it's a lot. But, yeah. But um, basically, uh, there are stricter handgun laws here. Handguns are not very popular. They're pretty hard to get. Um, you know, you have to classes, training, license, that kind of thing. Um, rifles and shotguns are mainly what people use here because we hunt tar, we hunt venison, you know. Um, and then before the shooting it was possible to get semi-automatic and assault-style weapons, um, but very difficult, lengthy process, obviously, but they were fine. Um, the gunman was not a Kiwi, he was Australian. The guns were not legally purchased, they were black market purchased. Um, and I, I think most of them were, he had a few. Um, anyway, the, the, the thing went down, I think the number was 51 people lost their lives that day, and um, you know, Jacinda took the day to talk to us Kiwis on TV all day, and, you know, she was there at the mosque, morning with people, hugging, crying, um, and within six days, she, she rolled out her gun buyback, you know, legislation. It took a little while after, obviously, because, you know, processes to get it, you know, official, um, to when it would be enacted. Um, but it was only within months, I believe, to where the deadline was that every gun had to be turned in. And it was pretty much a unanimous decision. It was bipartisan. You know, anyone from Labor, Green, New Zealand First, Maori Party, National. Um, we, we have like five or six parties, by the way, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And um, everyone, hands down, was like, yep, yep, no more, no more big guns. So uh, all the assault style, the semi-autos, the fully autos, you know, and... Some laws changed for maybe making it more strict uh, to get the other guns that would stick around, but they were like, hey, here's your deadline, sell them back to the government, here's the money we're giving you, we're taking your guns and we're going to destroy them. And that's what they did. So now if anyone has those style weapons, they are living outside of the law, and if they're caught, they're in big trouble. Right. Uh, the cool thing about the government here in New Zealand is that we operate many parties. Um, obviously, we have... Labor and National, which is liberal and conservative, you know, um, right. and those are the two main parties, but we also have New Zealand First, Green Party, Maori Party, um, Vision, uh, and, and we are able to do what's called a coalition government. So Jacinda Ardern is our Prime Minister, she's of the Labor Party, um, but her Deputy Prime Minister, which would kind of be like a Vice President for us, is Winston Peters, he's of the New Zealand First Party. Hmm. Uh, and they run a coalition government. And that yes. is um, basically it's when, uh, you know, we don't vote for just two people. So when the vote is skewed, of course, to labor, and labor's going to win, but it's not close enough to oust national, Jacinda got to choose who was going to be her deputy prime minister, and she chose to coal uh, coalition government with Winston Peters. Awesome. Gotcha. And what's the, what's the health care situation there? Are you able to tap into that? As a yeah, resident, absolutely. So I've had two run-ins. Um, I was shooting a music video, and I had a, a run-in with a barbed wire fence. Oh and, um, I had that's to go to the ER, and um, it was gross, and it was taken care of, and that's fine. So I got a nice little tetanus shot. I got a clean up and some stitches, and um, it was just forty bucks out of my pocket, even though I'm uninsured wow. and not a citizen. And wow. then I had a big run-in um, at the. And at uh, the beginning of February, I have a, a long-running issue with my back from a snowboarding uh, accident that I had quite some years back. Um, and I blew out my back. I, I, I had three herniated discs. Um, it was so bad that I 
couldn't get out of bed. They had to come and get me in an ambulance. They had to shoot me full of fentanyl to get me to even get out of bed. Um, it was pretty wild. So I spent four days in the hospital. I received world-class care. I waited six hours for an MRI just so that the first guy could get it. You know, it's not a big deal. Everyone always says, oh, universal health care, but you're going to wait six months for an MRI. Right. Six hours. Six, uh, same day um, service. Same day service, yep. Yeah. Spent four nights there. I would, They helped me walk again. They strengthened me. They gave me heaps of medicine and care. And there were three main doctors. There were four nurses. The doctors rotated after two days. So I had 12 people at me all day making sure that I was on my feet, you know, ready for what I needed to do by Monday. And they got me out. And um, I was given no paperwork other than to agree that I... I love them and their service, and I was happy to leave on my own accord. And they gave me a prescription uh, for some muscle medications, and it cost me thirty dollars out of pocket for wow. six weeks of medicine and that entire stay. That was it, thirty dollars. And I did, I did some math. It would be around twenty-eight to thirty-two thousand. Thousand dollars here. Under. No, it's uh, it's a disaster. It really points out to you when you have that opportunity to travel, especially if you stay in some place for an extended period of time. Um, and you see that here we are in the richest, most powerful nation on earth, and we can't even it either bankrupts people or you go without this basic um, something as basic to the human condition as healthcare. And it doesn't have to be that way. Um, and it was certainly eye opening for me even in a place like Colombia, which, you know, economically isn't as advanced. Um, but, you know, I chose to stay down there an extra couple of weeks this winter. I haven't told this story to too many people, but I actually had surgery, a full operating room uh, surgery, and I chose to stay down there because here, even as retired cop on a, with the pension fund, you know, they, they basically threw us to the wolves. We're on the ACA with everybody else, and they give us a little stipend towards it, but it, a $7,000 deductible. So I know if I'm having an operating room surgery, it's going to cost me $7,000. Um, and I did it down there. It was 800 bucks, tax title and out the door. Um, and, and so there you are. And so we see in different countries around them. And, and, and there's medical tourism where people like travel down there just because you can't afford it here yeah. um, to go down there. Vietnam, Canada, very popular. Right, right. So anyway, it, it just goes to show, I think, we lose sight because when you're in the same place, um, and you haven't experienced these things and seeing how it is elsewhere, it tells you it does not have to be this way. And that's what's so damn frustrating to me. Um, oh, it's all people know, you know? Right, right. But um, anyway, getting back, to, uh, getting back to the music side, man, what's, uh, what does the future hold? Um, you know, the traction, hopefully Zuckerberg gets his shit together. Um, and everybody seeing, seeing your song that should, uh, what, you know, what, what, where do we go from here? You have any thoughts of touring New Zealand? And, uh, I told you I want to be on the VIP list when you're, when the U S leg of the tour hits, man. Yeah, bro. Easy. Oh, always, <laughs> always spot for D live, bro. I love it. Right at the top of the list. Um, right. So, uh, basically huge response on truth. We're super stoked with it. And, um, we have a group meeting on Saturday. We're going to talk about the next video we're doing. So uh, this will be an ongoing collaboration. Bo Show and I now have eight tracks together ready for a live set. Uh, we're going to be recording those to give y'all an album. Um, two of those songs are reimagined Hootie Time songs. So we have transformed Paris into a live tune and Scoop into a live tune. Uh, the other six include Truth and five other originals that we've created. Nice. Um, so out of that, we're going to give you guys an album. Um, we are going to do another video with the same team uh, that created Truth. Um, we're going to shoot this one at a location called Buttery Beach. Uh, that is W-H-A-R, Buttery Beach. Um, and that you may, uh, you may know from your Microsoft backgrounds and your Apple backgrounds. Oh, nice. Yeah. place it's very otherworldly so the video is is gonna be awesome that's all i can say for now <laughs> but that's what we're gonna do we're gonna take the show on the road of course in new zealand both islands um we're just gonna relentlessly and just like violently tour this country um and then when it is cool when the coast is clear um there will be hopefully a bow show hoodie time tour in the states 
uh, Europe, and then, you know, of course, booty time, solo shows, whenever those happen. So. That's I've awesome, got man. I've got music I'm working on as well, but we're focusing on the Bo Show collab. We want to get this done and dusted and, and start booking this out. Um, booty time music is much easier to make. It's just me. I just do it. <laughs> now you got to produce stuff. Um, herd the cats. It's get everybody... <laughs> That's right. Well, you're killing it, bro. I really appreciate it. Um, I appreciate you joining us on the show this evening. Um, again, a native Cincinnati and hitting it big all the way on the other side of the globe in New Zealand. And uh, yeah, man, that's awesome. So glad to have you on here. You're doing big things. Let us know what's all your uh, social media so we can find you. I already dropped the Spotify uh, and the YouTube link in the comments here for everybody to go check that out. But uh, where, where can we find you online on, on the internet? Instagram at Hoodie Time, H O O D. Why time? Um, Facebook, obviously, just check their stuff. And um, anywhere you listen to music, I'm on every single thing that's out there. So just Google Hoodie Time, have fun, and you'll you'll find me. Oh, also, that's... shout out to Feel Art. That's in Cincinnati Art right there. Nice. I love if it. If you're not familiar with Feel Art, he does some great work. So shout out <laughs> to him. Love it. Always have the uh, hometown Queen City connection. We love that for sure. All right, brother, take it easy. We'll all be sure to, to uh, check it out. Everybody go listen to Truth. It's a powerful song and a good song. Um, it's got the message and it's because that's been in my head ever since it dropped, man. So um, that's, most, that's mostly good. Uh, I like it so much it hasn't gotten annoying. And you also get the uh, seal of approval from my dad, Rev Ron. Uh, who, <laughs> who I knew he would love the blues, uh, the blues hook there. So um, yeah, so Rev Ron's a big hoodie time fan now. So there's, so there's that. <laughs> All right, brother, I appreciate it. Um, enjoy your Thursday in uh, New Zealand, and we'll be uh, we'll be checking in with you soon. Everybody at Derek Bauman, you know where to find me. This will be uploaded to YouTube as well. Derek Bauman on there. Hit the subscribe button. Um, appreciate you following here. Uh, hit the get notifications button to get all of our lives. And we'll be back tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, um, keeping with our uh, kind of uh, political angle, I guess, if you will. Uh, Jessica Miranda, uh, who is in a, uh, in a tight battle for her um, seat in the Ohio State House. Um, and so we want to hear the latest with her, especially with the shenanigans that we got going on up in Columbus with this. $60 million um, people being covered. It's corruption. It's just terrible. Let out of there in handcuffs. Um, and we're going to get to the bottom of that. Fortunately, we got Jessica on the show tomorrow night to get us caught up. But, Hoodie, thanks, brother. I appreciate your time tonight. We'll talk soon. Yes, sir. Thank All right. You, All right. Peace. Everybody be safe. Have a great night, Cincinnati. Love you, as always.